Welcome to the Lock Sportscast, your weekly source for Lock Sport News. This is episode 91, recorded February 28th, 2022. I'm your host, Charles Current. In today's episode, Tool US election update, a locksmith's view on game mechanics, more safe cracking robots, criminal locksmiths, sales giveaways, and more. You can subscribe to the audio version of the show on most podcast apps and at thelocksportscast.com. You can subscribe to the video version on YouTube or Odyssey. Links to stories discussed will be in the show notes. Some apps limit the length of show notes and the ability to post links, but you can always find full show notes with links at thelocksportscast.com. Then add a slash in the episode number if you want to go right to the episode. Otherwise, click on episodes in the menu. I apologize if you hear a lot of rain in the background. It is windy and rainy out there, and this room has a awning over the window, which is a metal louvered awning, so it makes that rain on a a tin roof sound. I do my best to get that out in post, but some of it might creep through this week. By the time you hear this, Locky Awards voting will be closed. And the live stream is currently planned for March 13th. I'm hoping to do it about 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time in the U.S. But I would like feedback from you on how that works for everyone involved. I know there are people in Australia and Europe and the U.K. and different parts of the U.S. So let me know how that might work for you or if that conflicts with anybody's scheduled live streams. I don't have everybody's live stream schedules, so drop me a line, let me know. We still have time to change that. It's not set in stone by any means. And in way of a minor correction, last week I read a comment from a viewer who said that the QX3 auto dialer was about $10,000 and the new one could manipulate. So I received a counter comment to that clarifying, and this was from Vent, that the QX3 is not $10,000. It is significantly cheaper than that, and the current implementation does not actually manipulate a lock. So a little confusion there about to its exact capabilities, but um, since Vent is a vendor of it, I believe, I will take their word on that for now. In that comment, they also mentioned that the their opinion, the best auto dialer currently is the Jack Pro, and it doesn't manipulate either. However, it does have a lot of really cool features, and so I had to go look that up. I found this YouTube video demonstration of the Jack auto dialer. Um, I believe this is not the Pro version, the version before that. Yeah, it does have a lot of really cool features. I'm not sure about all the 3D printed parts, but Feature-wise, it's pretty cool. It's got a lot of really nice stuff on it. And I went to their website and checked out the Pro version and all the specifics on it yesterday. And today, the site is down. I don't know if that has to do with some of the upset in certain parts of the world or not, but currently, that website has been taken down with no reason why. But you can always check out the video that will be in the show notes. And that sent me on a kick looking for other safe cracking auto dialers or robo dialers, as it will be. And I came across this channel called Safe Cracker Bot. This gentleman, this is a fairly new channel, four months old. The first video is him showing the development version of his safe cracking robot. Then he shows some videos on how to manipulate locks, or at least how he does it. And then some videos about improvements on the Safe Cracker Bot, a prototype of version two and a demonstration of how to set up the device, almost like maybe he's thinking about selling it. So, but his is actually working on locks, opening old safes for him. So definitely a working implementation and worth checking out. You might subscribe to that channel if you're interested. And there are quite a few more out there and I'm planning on putting together a list of all the safe cracking robots I can find on YouTube, create a playlist. And when I have that done, or at least reasonably done, I will post a link and and let you know on the show. But for now, uh, I don't have it. I just haven't had the time to set it up yet. Moving on to community news, Tool US has changed some deadlines on the questions and nominations for the board elections. They say in their statement, 
that the board has voted to extend the deadline for questions for the candidates and for nominations of candidates by four days. This will give additional time for discussion and for members interested in joining the board to ask questions of the current board members. Send questions and nominations to board at tool.us. So the revised timeline is questions are due by February 25th. Nominations, which is passed. Um, nominations due by March 2nd, which will be about the time you hear this episode. Candidate videos are due March 8th. Voting will be open March 14th through April 4th. So hopefully some of you got that message before this episode because I'm running late again and the news is a little stale. And Albert LaBelle wrote in to say that he did a video on the Leashy 2-in-1 Pick and Decoder product. That video was posted on the 23rd of February, just after my last video went up, but I didn't have this news before that video. So again, a little stale, but along with the review of the Leashy 2-in-1, he has a code of his own for Lockpick Mall that you can get 6% off until February 23rd. So I will put that in the sales section later in the show and also in the show notes. And I will have a link in the show notes to his video demonstrating and reviewing the Leashy. And it's the KW1 Leashy, I think, that he does. So be sure to check that out. And for Lockpickers United belts this week, we have two new purple belts. We have Seminawa, I don't know how to pronounce that. His Reddit name is Daifon. And then we have Lock Fumbler, both with purple belts. We have Down Under Monkey has earned a brown belt. Congratulations to you. And on the black belt front, Keyless Entry has earned a black belt. So I'll read the announcement here. It says, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to our newest black belt, Keyless Entry. In order to qualify for this, Keyless has picked the mighty Asa 700, the Asa V10 in Finn style. In addition to this, he has successfully completed both the impressioning and Group 2 safe manipulation quests. So congratulations to all of you and keep up the good work. Over on the speed locks front, we have some new records set by Space Nut 1. Those are for the Alpha 1000 series locks, it looks like. We have the Alpha 1000-20 in 3.233 seconds, the Dash 30 in 0.5 seconds, the Dash 35 in 1.267 seconds, and the Dash 50 in 8.233 seconds. Now it's time to take a quick break, say thank you to the people that made this episode possible. We'll start with the Patreon subscribers. We have Pandafrog, Michael Gilchrist, Starlock, Williams Brain, Dave Dubidi Seifert, Lebon's Locksport Journey, Pat from Uncensored Tactical, Three Raccoons in a Coat, Sherelle, Dr. Hogmaster, Clayton Howard, aka Cool Tune, Mog, John Locke, Rat Yoke, Mr. Picker, Cranky Lock Picker, JHP Picking, and Bare Bones Lock Picking. Chief content producer for this episode is Panda Frog. Other content producers are Albert LaBelle, Bare Bones Lock Picking, Sherelle, Gravity Karma, HV Logic, Joe Picks, Joshua Gonzalez, Picksmith. Sir Paradise and Tony Varelli. Thank you to all of you for your support. Remember, the show is only possible because of your support. So please send in your news, links, events, giveaway information, anything you have that's Locksport related. News was pretty light this week as far as what was sent in. So almost didn't make this episode uh, till I ran across some of the other stuff on my own searches there when I had some time. So please continue to send in that information. Every bit helps. And especially when I'm busy like this. I don't have time to spend a lot of time searching out and anything you can send in is a huge help. Don't forget to share the podcast with your friends, leave a review or a comment, thumbs up on YouTube or Odyssey. If you want to donate, you can either by PayPal or subscribing on Patreon. I really don't give much benefits, so I don't blame people for not signing up. Patreons Normally would get the episode a little early, but I haven't been getting them out on time as it is, so there really hasn't been any benefit there right now. If you have any cool Locksport stories, either your journey through Locksport or something that's happened to you because of Locksport, please send it into the show, something I'd really like to share more of on the show. There was one person's request for my story. I think I shared bits and pieces of it on here. Uh, maybe when I have some time, I'll put some more together and get that up here. Feel free to send in feedback that can be either anonymous or I can share it on the show. That's your choice. And let's get on to the rest of the show. 
There hasn't been a lot of activity on the how did you get into Locksport thread on the Reddit that I talked about last week, but I do have one more story here that I feel I can probably read. This person said, Bar I do IT work for had an entire set of keys fall in a lake, so they were left without any way to open their safe, pool tables, and a few doors. The local locksmith had packed up and left a year earlier, and the soonest anyone could be out was two weeks. I took upon myself to get a cheap pick set from Amazon and see if I could do any good. A day or two later, I had managed to pick all the locks they needed picked and replace them with new ones. These days, I would probably have been able to make them new keys since none of the locks were especially tricky. Learning lock picking by necessity there. Hey, do what you gotta do, right? Another news story I came across that I'm going to share as the locksmith story for this week is one I'm not going to actually share the short story here. It's a really long article, and I'm just going to share the link and uh, what it's about, and you can go check it out if you're interested. The story was called Locks, Lockpicking, Locksport, and an Actual Locksmith. The article was by Christian Donlin, and it was posted the 26th of February, 2022. Like I said, it's a long article. The author meets up with a locksmith he knows and shows him the Museum of Mechanics Lockpicking on Steam. The locksmith gives him a review of the different game mechanics. And along the way, they talk about locks, locksmithing, and how he got into the business. He gives his opinion on the quality of locks and whether we need more pick-resistant locks. He also talks about locksport and the extra business it's brought him. So it's a good read. Like I said, long article. Go check it out. I highly recommend it. There are some aspects of his opinion, like on uh, whether we need more pick-resistant locks, that I kind of disagree with. I don't think extra security is a bad thing, and he seems to think it might be dangerous. But it's always good to hear other people's opinions and uh, see things from the other side. And the criminal story I have this week is actually locksmith criminals. The article was entitled, Locksmiths Wanted for Robbing New York City Woman Over $1,000 After Seeking Their Aid. Obviously, this is out of New York. It says the NYPD is asking for help identifying two locksmiths wanted for robbing a 26-year-old woman who came to them for help when she couldn't get into her Manhattan apartment earlier this month. According to police, the victim attempted to gain entry into her apartment at 4.30 p.m. and accidentally broke her key in the lock. The victim, using her cell phone, googled the locksmith and called for help. Upon arrival, the individuals quoted her $300 for the job. She agreed. And after they gained access to the apartment, the individuals stated the job was more labor intensive and the actual cost of their work was $750. However, police said the victim refused, at which point the men said they would not leave until they were given the money. The individuals then demanded $1,500 in cash for their services. The victim said she did not have that amount of money in her possession and would go to the bank to get the money. Authorities said the individuals prevented her from leaving the apartment or using her cell phone, causing her to fear for her safety. And I believe that would bring a kidnapping charge against these individuals. The suspects allowed her to pay by credit card before fleeing in a silver SUV in an unknown direction. Cops said one suspect is described as 170 pounds, approximately 5 foot 8 inches tall with brown eyes and a full beard with short, short dark hair. He was last seen wearing a black hooded winter jacket, black pants, and black shoes. The article does have photographs of at least the one suspect. The other suspect is described as having a full beard with short dark hair. He was last seen wearing a black jacket and a black hooded sweatshirt and black pants. There are photographs on the Articles, I have two separate articles on this linked in the show notes, so if you live in the New York area, you might check it out. And I received a note from Bare Bones Lockpicking. As we stated earlier, the site-wide sale on picks with the little icon in the corner is going away, and they're going to a coupon code system, and they have set up a new discount code for LockSportsCast listeners. The code is pretty long. It's Listen to the Lock Sportscast 2022. I will have that in the show notes, of course. They say this coupon code is currently a 15% store-wide discount on top of any other discounts or sale items. 
The percentage amount of the discount or type of discount will regularly change. So next week or month might drop to 10%, but include a particular discount like buy three bones in 23 thousandths and get three bones in 15 thousandths for free. The following week or month could be free shipping or something like that, et cetera, et cetera. They say the coupon code itself will also regularly change. They say they will also be providing unique coupon codes for each of the Aussie resources in their Aussie resources page. And that is to encourage more listeners and subs to those channels. A Locksporter who is following all of the Aussie resources channels will therefore have the most up-to-date coupon options. So check that out at Bare Bones Lock Picking. My code currently is listen to the Lock Sportscast 2022. And just to be clear, uh, to be totally transparent, Bare Bones Lock Picking is a patron of the show at the $5 a month level. However, that I was very clear when they signed up that does not buy them any extra advertising, but they are very active at sending me information, which is fair game. Same goes for any vendor. You send me information about new products or sales, I will cover it on the show because I view that as a benefit to the listener. I'm not personally endorsing any of these products or these vendors, but if it's a benefit to my listeners, if I think it's a benefit to my listeners, I will certainly share it on the show. In my opinion, the best way to get coverage on the show is to provide coupon codes for the listeners, whether they're specific to this show or not. Send in coupon codes, and I will cover them on the show. Anyway, moving on, Albert LaBelle has a coupon code for 6% off at lockpickmall.com. The code is Albert and expires February 23rd of 2023, so about a year from now. Joe Picks also has a coupon code for lockpickmall.com. That code is Joe Picks, and it is also good for 6% off. He did not give me an expiration date as of right now. Matt's Lock Pit still has custom picks on sale on that site, mattslockpit.com. And the first to give me a custom coupon code for Lock Sports Cast is 3DLockSport.com. Tony Varelli's site, 10% off with the code LSCAST10. Definitely head over there and check that out. Longtime supporter of the show, Tony Varelli. And again, I get no benefit from these coupon codes. They're just so you guys can save some money. Mako Locks, 15% off with the code by Mako. UKLockPickers.co.uk, 10% off with the code GIFT. Moving on to giveaways, HV Logic has a 500 subscriber giveaway running. The hashtag HVLogic500 says, in celebration of hitting 500 subscribers, it's giveaway time. The prize is one mystery box of locks. More entries equals more stuff in the box. To enter, make a video showing off your lock collection. Use the hashtag HVLogic500. Get your entry in before March 26th. PandaFrog has part two of the hashtag SpeedAbus giveaway running. This was the giveaway where he had two parts. The first one was who was going to win the matched Abus 6520s and would... And those people were able to take part in this part two. So the rules for part two, he says, speed pick the Abus 6520 with my markings, making sure it is the one he sent to you, of course. Show the key, use the key, make sure the PF marking is visible. Speed picking rules apply. Use hashtag speed Abus in the title and use the submission form on speedlocks.org. Fastest picker will win the prize box. And that ends 31st of March, 2022. And the hashtag Picksmith200 giveaway is still running. That one is running until March 13th. The 100 subscriber giveaway should be over by the time you hear this, but the 200 subscriber part of that is still running. The PandaFrog hashtag MiniPandaFrog2 giveaway is also still running. That runs until MiniPandaFrog2 is born. And the expected due date is the 8th of June, 2022. Be sure to check out that link and the rules if you are interested. There's always the hashtag LockBoss giveaway by CLK Supplies. Lots of good stuff given away there. That's it for this episode. Remember to send me any information you have that's LockSport related. Anything at all that you think the community would benefit from knowing, 
send it to podcast at thelocksportscast.com or any of the other methods listed in the show notes. I can really use all the help I can get until I get off of this ridiculous schedule at work. I'm pretty burned out. I'm really, really tired and I'm having a hard time concentrating on looking for stuff. So thank you and keep it legal. (laughs) 